people. Emotional intelligence, stop here. Emotional intelligence, EQ, is a relatively recent behavioral model uh, and rose to prominence with Daniel Goleman's 1995 book called Emotional Intelligence. Uh, this, he talked about having two aspects of in, in this process, and that is uh, understanding yourself, your goals, intentions, responses, and behavior, and then understanding others. So you really need to know yourself and you need to know others uh, in this uh, process. And he identified five domains of EQ. Uh, these are knowing your emotions, managing your emotions, motiva motivating yourself, recognizing and understanding other people's emotions, and managing relationships. If used properly, this can uh, have a very powerful impact uh, in, in understanding your training and knowing what it is that people need to know in relationship to their knowledge, skill, and affect or their behavior. Uh, and as I've indicated, it's been used a lot in, in, in management uh, development training in helping people uh, know uh, how and, and, and how to get work done through other individuals, uh, which is a very significant piece uh, with respect to what managers need to do. Uh, there's a lot of literature, and if you uh, dive into the readings and, and, and hit some of the sites in the readings uh, in the publication uh, that I have, here from, uh, from businessballs.com, uh, you can uh, get some additional information and, and get into the Consortium for Research on Emotional Intelligence in Organizations. Uh, and there's a lot of free literature that you can have with respect to these different guidelines uh, in terms of personal competence, focusing on self-awareness and self-regulation and uh, social competence that you can look at uh, in social skills and, and uh, in managing and working with yourself and others. Uh, and, and it's some, some very uh, impactful information. They also have some guidelines for best practices uh, in dealing with paving the way and assessing the organization's needs, assessing the individual, how to deliver assessments with care, uh, in maximizing learner choice, encouragement, encouraging people to participate, linking learner, learning goals to personal values and adjusting expectations, and engaging readiness. So th this can be used very effectively in, in designing uh, and, and developing and understanding uh, your audience uh, in terms of, and yourself. So, so as we've indicated in terms of these two aspects, it's knowing yourself, your goals and intentions, and knowing the feelings of others, uh, which is very important. Shahari Window uh, is another uh, cognitive psychological tool created by uh, Joseph Luff and, and Harry Ingham in 1955 in the United States to help people better understand their interpersonal communication and relationships. And, uh, and in performing this exercise, uh, the, the subject is given 55 adjectives and picks five or six as they feel uh, describing their own personality and peers of the subject are then given the same list and each pick five or six uh, adjectives describing the self. And then uh, it's placed in these quadrants and, and, the, and these quadrants look at, uh, uh, for example, the arena quadrant this represents the traits of the participants of both they, the subject, and the peers are aware of. And then the facade, uh, this represents uh, the information about the participant of which their peers are unaware. And the participant, whether or not, uh, wants to disclose or discloses this information. And then there's the blind spot, where the adjectives that are not supported by the participants and only by the peers are placed in the blind spot, which represents information of which the participant is not aware, but others are, and they decide whether or not and how to inform the individual uh, in this process. And then the unknown quadrant representing the behaviors or motives 
that are not recognized by anyone participating you know, in this process. So this is very good uh, and a good technique in helping people understand uh, who they are and, 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 and their makeup. When you put all of this together in terms of personality and, and you put this together in terms of understanding style and learning, uh, you can develop a very powerful uh, training package in any kind of environment um, in criminal justice and in juvenile justice uh, as, as you work uh, within closed environments or community-based uh, environments where individuals have to interact with others. Uh, uh, in this process, okay? Self-study and learning programs. The same basic principles apply to designing a self-study pro program as any other training. You need to think in terms of adult learning principles. You need to be able to think in terms of the style of learning that your staff uh, use and integrate those different components together. The internet enables self-study learning and development to have to be more power, useful, empowering, and cost-effective. It is the wave of the future. Be creative and innovative, and there are no limits in using self-study learning programs. Know yourself and help staff know themselves. These are very crucial and critical points. Plan training and evaluation. Consider evaluation training effectiveness, which includes before and after measurements. Look for improvement or lack thereof in the gaps you identified in terms of performance, growth, and the personal professional gaps. Principal questions in general that you should ask include, to what extent were the training needs or the identified training needs objectives achieved? To what extent were the learner's objectives achieved? What specifically did the learner learn? Are you able to identify uh, the knowledge, skills, and behaviors that that learner learned? What commitment did the learners make about learning? And what will they use at work? What are these skills that they're going to be applying uh, on the job? When they get back to the work environment, some critical questions you could ask is, how successful were the trainees in implementing their action plans? Can you assess and evaluate? Do you know what they did before? And do you know what they're doing now? To what extent were they supported in this by their line managers? Good training is not a substitute for good supervision. They can receive all the training necessary, but if they're not having the support of their line managers to apply that training, it's lost. And lastly, to what extent has the training achieved a return on investment for the organization? That's the bottom line. What is the organization benefiting in this process? And are you providing more effective services to your consumers who evaluates training? Well, the list is pretty obvious, as you can see. From the bottom up, it's the employee, the trainee, the supervisor, frontline management, the trainer, the manager of trainers, the senior management, and the administrator. If you have the support of the administrator, you will gain it if they're able to assess and understand what's going on.